Welcome to a pod practice series where we will be previewing the 2023 club nationals by interviewing a player from each of the top four teams in the division and getting their thoughts and their mindsets going into the tournament. I hope you enjoy. This episode is brought to you by Kiko Socks. With a pair of Kikos, you'll have an experience that keeps you focused on your performance and not your feet. Use our coupon code POD15 for 15% off your order at kikosocks.com. I hope you guys enjoyed the pod. Be sure to follow us on Instagram or YouTube at podpractice underscore pod. Email us at show at podpracticepod or listen on Spotify at podpractice. Are you ready? Welcome back, everybody. Next up is Nee Wynn of Denver Boulder, Molly Brown. Um, Nee, why don't you tell us a little about yourself and um, your career up until this point? Yeah, so I started playing as a freshman in high school. My older brother played, and uh, basketball was my main sport at the time, and I just thought it'd be a good off-season sport. Uh, I played with the boys team that year uh, and started to quickly realize that I, you know, had an act for the sport. So I continued pursuing it, quit basketball. And like my first big goal was uh, to make the junior world's team my junior year of high school. Uh, so I made that team. Um, and then, yeah, from there, just kept getting more competitive. I, by uh, my senior year, Molly Brown had taken me in, um, sort of like a investment in like a youth player to try to build me up. And I've been with the team ever since. So um, this is my 10th year, 10th season. Holy with smokes. Team, wow. Wow. Pretty, pretty that was killer. a quick yeah. ascension for you. <laughs> That's crazy. Honestly, 10 years, a decade. Do you get like a special shirt for that? Or like um, <laughs> team give you anything for that? It seems like quite nah. the achievement. I don't know how many <laughs> players can say they've been on a team for 10 consecutive years. And it looks like you made the juniors team not once, but twice. Yes, made the juniors team twice. Hell yeah. And the U23 team once. Just smashed that goal, huh? Yeah, who <laughs> <laughs> Just checked that off. Alrighty. Awesome. Well, cool. We can kind of jump right in here. Um, just curious how you feel going into nationals. Um, you know, expectations going in as a one seed in your in your pool and also as, you know, defending champions. Um, congrats, by the way. But yeah, you're kind of how you feel and your expectations and stuff like that. Thanks and congrats to you guys as well, mm-hmm. of course. You guys have the same same goal as well, uh, which is exciting. For us, yeah, I mean, I think you guys get it. It's like defending a national championship is uh, something that'd be like really cool, really difficult to do. Um, going in as the fourth seed, though, for nationals this year, it definitely like gives us a little bit of leeway, you know, we don't have everyone gunning for us. We haven't uh, won any of the the really major tournaments this year either. So um, we're going in like pretty confident, but um, also like wary of the fact that like, you know, there's a team in the pool that already has beaten us. Uh, We play the Sixers for the third time this season. Um, And if we come out flat, you know, they might be able to, to overcome us. So Definitely, uh, definitely excited for our pool, but uh, also wary of the fact that you know anyone can get knocked out of yeah the bracket. <clears throat> then it's kind of a good mentality. It, it keeps you on edge a little bit, and you hopefully you won't get caught sleeping because you do know that you could lose, and you have lost to some of these teams. Um, which which segues kind of the, to the next question. Um, what, what, which games are you are you most excited for? Um, you know, you mentioned pool play already, but even outside of your pool, um, and who? Yeah, who who do you see as your your biggest competition right now? Uh, that's an interesting question. I think like not knowing how like the pools play out, uh, it's hard to say who I'm excited for, what other games I'm excited about. But 
I guess in terms of our pool game, I'm pretty excited to see Sixers again. I think they are like pretty youthful and athletic and uh, they bring us like sort of a different style of game that we have to like be sort of ready for. Um, I think, uh, yeah, as far as like other teams that I would hope that we get to see somewhere in the tournament, I would say like, you know, Scandal as number one and also as a team who we haven't seen at all this year. So that that matchup leaves like a lot of question marks if we ever end up, mm-hmm. you know, facing them later on in the tournament. And talking about the Sixers a bit, I have a, a very fond memory, but um, of our semi and your semi back to back fields, a lot of people lining the fields, which was super sick. Um, mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I didn't get to watch, but I've heard and I wa- I've watched it back that your guys' game was like very tight in semis last year. You guys went down pretty big, um, were able to just claw back, which was sick. Um, tell me a little bit about that game last year and um, just that that matchup. I think it's almost a rivalry at this point, like over the last couple of years. So just want to hear a little bit more about that. Yeah, it's so funny. Like our, our team in semis, we always have this like, weird thing where we come out super flat and so I mean we were down three breaks by halftime mm-hmm. at that point and Claire kind of got us together and you know gave a speech about asking us who on the team like we play for and it really fired us up you know she, she was like you know I play for Manu on this team like who do you play for and so it really got us like thinking internally and mm-hmm. Uh, we just like resurged second half and uh, definitely clawed our way back. I think it was we we had gotten a couple of breaks and we were down and then we broke um, right at the end, right when we needed to to take the advantage. And um, yeah, so I think that uh, the semis, I guess, curse is <laughs> has been uplifted after that game. But yeah. um, there is something to be said about. <laughs> Molly Brown underperforming, I think, coming out in those like, really <laughs> tight games. One of the things we were really excited about last year uh, was the fact that we would get that grass game and not like be in the turf under the oh, lights, oh, really so loud sick. stadium. Yeah, like I think that's like definitely like a an environment that we would thrive in mm-hmm. a little bit more than under the lights and in the stadium and whatnot. So I think that was like a really nice thing to be set up with i hope i hope it works out that way <laughs> yeah. again this year there's something to be said about <clears throat> just a grass field and like everybody lining the side like it's so much so, better than a stadium but yeah, yeah totally. there's something about it something about it something oh, yeah. about it so would you view Sixers as like do, do you feel like you have like a rivalry with because i also think of you guys in brute squad as well as like a, I mean, it seems like you guys were always oh, yeah. playing and until last year like brute squad was always like that team that it was you couldn't quite get over the hump beating. And then last year I felt like was one of the big signs, like, cause you beat them in quarters is or pool play. Pool, and then pool play. Pool play, yeah. just pool yeah. play. But so even just beating them in the, you know, tournament, I felt like that is like a big sign for you guys, like moving forward. Um, but like, do, do you, like, how do you feel about your relationship with those teams? I suppose like in your head. Yeah, I think, I think in my head, I still view brute for sure as our rival. Um, you're definitely right about like us beating them in pool play like cuz said it best she like after we beat them in pool play on universe she was like i just feel like we just won nationals and like at that point you know that's like (laughs) that's like day two of the tournament and (laughs) so uh i think yeah we like we went one and one with brute this year so I think matching up with them again it's always going to be really exciting it's it's super sweet because like they're always bringing out like their best selves against us and i think same same for us if not like right at the beginning of the game we definitely <laughs> come back uh late uh to brute but yeah i definitely yes. would view them as our as our rival yeah something about those games when you know you know like teams are giving it their all that can be so special like obviously it's fun to play new teams but also something about playing a team you're so familiar with and you want to be that much more like that the that kind of environment is really mm-hmm. special. Um, 
off of this kind of like what kind of individual matchups do you look forward to going into nationals is there anyone on sixers or on any of the other teams that you would hope to get like a matchup against personally uh in the tournament yeah i guess uh matchup wise it's pretty fun i get to i get to play on a line with claire and usually we'll take like the top two uh cutters on on the line and uh basically like look to each other for like bracketing so we're basically bracketing Mm. the two best players um on their line at any given time which is really cool because i think working with claire it's like really easy i i look up i see claire i know like claire's got my back um and it like sets up like a pretty nice like two-on-one situation sometimes because you know most of the time they're looking towards those like one to two players and um yeah, I think I think like any any of the teams that we have, I'm really just looking forward to like having Claire as like, you know, my help. Yeah. It's it's so enjoyable to play with someone that you feel like you don't have to talk with even to be on the same page. That's always one of my more satisfying moments while playing. Yeah, well, I think yeah. what's most interesting about that to me is we usually talk about that sort of chemistry offensively, but not enough defensively it's cool that you've been able to work that out and probably something that people should be thinking about more often totally i thought you were gonna say brick dos santos because <laughs> you, you when you guys match up when y'all match up it's so sick so that's that's what i thought was gonna happen but yeah i mean f- from the sixers i think yeah it's either claire and i taking brit and if we're not taking brit we're taking uh sarah jacobson those two are pretty phenomenal players and yeah, you have <laughs> a highlight. You have a highlight sky and someone in the end zone to get it's, a block. It's Brit. Was it Brit? Yeah, yeah. yeah there's a Brit. sick picture. That's I was nice just on one. Instagram trying to find the picture because the picture is so sick, but I couldn't find <laughs> it. We'll, 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 we'll clip it in. Yeah, we'll clip it. Uh, you guys have to help me find it because <laughs> <I'm> crazy. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, what's what's up next here, Quinn? Is it you? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, kind of going back to more team focused stuff. Um, curious what your guys' team goals are, what a successful weekend would look like if, you know, beyond winning, obviously winning is, is always the goal and that's a success, but, um, what a successful weekend would lo- look like beyond that. Yeah. Uh, I think beyond winning and hopefully defending, um, a big weekend for us would be, you know, one that we could close the book on, even if we don't uh, end up winning and be like, yeah, you know, we, we gave it our all. We had like a shit ton of fun doing it together. And um, I think that that's something that would be successful, even though like it it would be a bit of a bummer to not, you Mm -hmm. know, go as far as we want to go. But um, we've had a lot more of those kind of seasons and we've had, a winning one so um i think to to leave the weekend and feel like we we gave it our all gave it our best and uh, play for each other i think that is pretty pretty essential to, to our team um yeah I, I suppose as as defending champions does does it does it this tournament feel any different than nationals have before for you or are you looking at it as, as kind of the same? Yeah, I think I think it feels a little bit different. Um, just because, like, I know what, like, the feeling of winning is like and looks like. Um, I don't really want to, like, go into the weekend, like, selling myself short in case, like, things, like, don't go, you know, according to plan. So, like, that's the thing that's, like, definitely interesting about, like, having last year's national championship win um, versus this year going in as far as like you know feeling confident about like where we are or how we will do like I'm not really sure we have like a lot of really good wins and a lot of really good losses this year um, and I feel like we're trending in the right direction but um, there's also you know 15 other teams that also want it just as much as we do so yeah we say this a lot the, the margins are thin yeah i feel like one thing that's hard for me to always accept is like there's a good amount i've no there's a lot 
that's really just out of your control as an individual. And then also just as a team, like there's as much as I want to be like the, I'm, we're going to go do it and take it all home. Like you really have to get to the point of accepting that some things are going to have to go your way. Some discs are going to have to bounce in your direction. And that's really just the way it goes. And it's why it's exciting because you never know. And that's why you have to play the games, but it's a tough thing to, to, you know, wrap your head around that you don't have control and it sucks and I don't like it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Kids, where are we at here on the, Dog. You're up, dude. It's Am so easy. It goes one, <laughs> two, three. Like it's like so easy. I'm like, how are we? It goes Quinn, and then you, and then I go. <laughs> Holy smokes! Okay, um, we're on. Um, yeah, personal mindset. Then I kind of we kind of touched on this a little a, bit. A little yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, so team wise, we we talked about it. Do you, do you have uh, like what's your your personal um, tournament prep like? Are you and is nationals any different for you leading leading up to uh you know next week uh let's see i don't know personal prep just like taking care of my body um not staying up super late and you know sleeping well eating well that sort of thing tapering um you know not training super hard in like the days like leading up to the tournament um yeah pretty pretty standard like nothing i don't do anything too special what about um your mental game do you get nervous before games uh yeah i get i get a little nervous for sure um we have like the sports psych that we've had with us these like last two seasons so um we do like a bit of like breath work and meditating before big things like that and i think that's been helpful these last few years um we like before going to nationals we'll have like a talk with him about like things that are uncontrollable such as like you know folks in the stands that are like yelling at us like people that are really loud those sort of things and how we like block them out on Mm -hmm. you know a team-wide level and also like a personal level um it like affects people in different ways so i think like having the tools from our sports psych is a uh, definitely been pretty sweet to have these last two seasons that's cool do you uh do that as a team or, or is it uh, on your own time uh so like he met with us several times uh this summer and like gives us sort of the tools and then like before and after practice we'll like put on the speaker like you know someone talking through like meditation with us so you know we do it we're doing it as a team getting to a place where we're calm and like you know releasing other things that like don't matter so uh yeah there's like an aspect of it that's like personal um you know like Mm -hmm. some people I, i don't really do it as much but some people we'll take their breath work into like a daily sort of routine and like you know, wake mm. up, do it, go to, before they go to bed or doing it. Um, I'm particularly bad about doing it myself. So mm-hmm. I kind of just like keep that to, you know, when we're doing it as a team. Game time. Yeah. Is there anything that's on your mind, like going into the tournament? Like, do you think about your role on the team or you, you someone that tries to stay focused on other things and delay it as much as possible. Like what, what, if anything, are you thinking about the week prior going into the tournament? Like what, what are those intrusive thoughts looking like about in terms of nationals that are, (laughs) that are sneaking in? Yeah. I mean, definitely got some intrusive thoughts. Like we ended up switching up the way, like last year we were, you know, we would send in three lines of folks and like, very specifically only played with like six to seven other people uh this year like kind of midway through the season we merged two of the lines and so like the like late merging of that line has like sort of resulted in like us being like a little bit stunted I guess in like the way that we're playing together and um sort of like hoping that this like last practice here on this Saturday like things come together um like that's like mostly the thing that's like on my mind the most is like making sure that like our line is like feeling really good about playing with each other and playing for each other 
Yeah. I've, I've, I imagine these guys can relate to that too. Cause we've, we've had uh, a lot of shuffling around of personnel this year, <sighs> which <laughs> <laughs> just I mean, injuries that I mean, like so much, so much of it is injuries though as well. Yeah. I think we figured out our O line like, a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> figure it out. Air quotes. <laughs> yeah, it's not even figured out. Yeah. It's always Kenzie, you're playing again now. You're not injured anymore. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna play. I'm gonna That's big time. Yeah. Gonna give it I well. mean, fifty eight, you know, how much of an impact is the fifty eighth best club player gonna have on not, too much. Not, not too much. Not too much. Fifty eight. Fifty eight. So I mean hopefully I get a few touches in there. <laughs> I don't know, maybe <laughs> Maybe score a goal, throw an assist. You never know. I'd like to just get on the field. Uh, yeah, that'd be huge. But uh, what advice as someone who started playing in college do you have for younger players? High school. High school. Oh, God. Wow. I When you said freshman and I was in my head thinking college again, but that wouldn't make sense since you've been on the team for 10 years. Uh, what advice do you have for younger players learning to play in high school? Um and obviously, you mean, I don't know. I feel like you're a pretty rare case of <laughs> aiming to make a junior team and then making like all of them <laughs> every time. So what, what kind of advice would you give to young players? Uh, yeah, I would say like the biggest thing for me growing up, like the thing that really like kept me in the sport and still like keeps me in the sport today or like the group of people that I choose to play Frisbee with. Um, and so like, for young people it's like finding those people who you call your friends and like if they're not playing frisbee getting them to play um and if they are already is like you know sticking by them because like i have lifelong friends from this sport and um you know without it it's definitely not the same so i I would say like that's like the biggest thing for me is like sticking by like people in the sport that are are there doing it enjoying it with you nice that's a good one that's that awesome. is a good one that's probably the most unique answer we've heard um knee do you have any finer thing in mind yeah do you have a finer <laughs> thing uh yeah I, I guess i i guess i have a finer thing like let, let me let, let us kick off the segment and then okay. <laughs> uh quinn is it you you got this, man. I did it last time. All right, all right. Okay, it's, it is time for Finer Things, presented by Kiko Socks. Experience a finer moment with a fresh pair of Kikos. Uh, do I do you have finer a finer thing? I do. I have one. I, 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 I have a I have one. It's not like super unique or good, but I I have one. Um Shall we, uh, do you want to kick it off so, so we can, so Nee can hear an example? Yeah, I'll kick it off. I'll kick it off. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't know if this is, this, it counts. I don't know if it counts that well, but it counts. Um, instead of eating like regular breakfast, like, like something with eggs or something like that, just having like a glazed donut and a black cup of coffee together, it's like (laughs) maybe just, it's pure bliss. And it's Plays like cloudy outside and it's like a little misty and oh man. I'm thinking Duncan right now. <laughs> um, why don't you, I, I want to hear knees. I'm curious. Cool. Um, I think my finer thing is like starting the morning with like a mint yerba mate. I'm huge on yerba mate nice. and I like can't do coffee at all. I get like super jittery on coffee. So uh, yeah, just cracking a cold yerba mate. It's that okay. theanine. <laughs> Interesting. I like is. that. That's a unique one. I like that. I've been seeing. Is caffeine a unique one? I don't know. I feel like well, caffeine. But, <laughs> I feel like caffeine it's like is... she has That's like true. mate. Like it's different. It's different. Like That's true. It's a unique caffeine. It's a unique caffeine drink. Like for sure. What if I just started my mornings with a Red Bull? Like what if I just started doing that? <laughs> She'd be <laughs> insane. <laughs> it would probably not be good for you. I have been seeing a lot of like people drinking like mate, like the in the traditional way. Like a lot of athletes, like Messi's been doing it for a long time. Apparently, I was seeing like the Argentinian rugby team doing it pregame. I don't really know why, but a lot of athletes do it. So, 
I think it's I think Mate like Mate yeah. is an Argentinian, so yeah, it makes okay. sense that they yeah. Interesting. And I, I do think there's some of the, like Nee was saying, like less jittery feeling to it and like a little sure. like smoother of a caffeine buzz, which I think for performance can be nice because you're not just going to be freaking the fuck out. Like I've That's definitely <laughs> played around with different <laughs> intakes of caffeine and found that some ways are better than others for sure. Nee, are you doing like Red Bull and stuff for games? Uh, Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. Molly Brown likes doing like what we call honey bowl so we'll have like red bull in one hand honey in the other hand and just Fuck down the yeah. pipe <laughs> holy that. shit that's sick, dude that's sick. Is that, oh my god i feel like there's <laughs> gotta be enough sugar in red bull already <laughs> to just not need it's honey as late. well <laughs> that's crazy that's that's great uh, uh kins what's yours okay what's yours? i actually i got one and quinn just reminded me of another one uh one is that um, when it's nice and cloudy, a little bit of a, a drizzle outside, and uh, you lay down early afternoon for a nice nap. And there's a thunderstorm in the background. It's dark. Here's some thunder and some lightning. That is a cozy, Dude, a cozy nice. time. Like I don't really take naps all that often, but when I do, it's <laughs> it's thundering and lightning Dude, that's outside. Nice. Um, that's a really good one. And then my other one from today is uh, Connor and I went to this school to teach ultimate. And the pure joy on like a tiny kid's face as they're running to chase after a disc or getting the excitement of throwing a Frisbee for the first time or like seeing that joy on someone little kid's face and like understanding. Oh, dude, they were these are like the most wholesome kids I've ever met in my life. It was beautiful. Like we would (laughs) Connor and I would tell them that we were going to play in San Diego next week. And this like little second grader would raise their hand in front of the whole class. And I go, yes. The question and she goes i hope you guys win <laughs> and, <laughs> and they, they have this little thing because they're all second graders and they all want to talk where like they go like this if they want to like agree if they agree and all the kids <laughs> and all the kids just start going <laughs> like, like they like all the kids were like aggressively agreeing with the fact that they wanted us to <laughs> win so hell yeah if that doesn't propel us to victory then i don't know what will uh, we need to bring the team back to that school <laughs> oh dude they were they would love it it was it was Awesome. So those are my two finer things. Okay. You guys helped me think of one, but give me 10 seconds. I have to go get a prop. Wow. Okay. Stall one. (laughs) 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 Um, What school is that? uh, It's called Prospect Ridge Academy. It's, um, we have these two like super fans. Uh, They're Danny Landisman's little cousins and it was their school. And their mom, like, set us up to go teach at the gym classes. And it was honestly, like, the best, like, teachings I've ever had. Like, second to fifth grade kids. And they were so good and excited That's to play fun. Frisbee. Yeah, it was really fun, actually. I was pleasantly surprised with how enjoyable it was. Are right, you ready for mine? Let's see, uh, Mike. Well, we all know as uh, from the pod that I drink a lot of sparkling water. Um, but it's it's actually not just the act of drinking a cold beverage it's the like experience of that That's crackle great, Mike. yeah nice. that was a good one that yeah. was a really good one my other yeah. one was almost yeah it was almost gonna i was almost gonna say drinking out cold lacroix but yeah very that's similarly. a good one yeah that's, what's, that's a good what's one. your favorite flavor uh the key lime okay i like a key lime i, I hear it's, it's like it's controversial good. though some people really hate really? it really really I've got um, an even more controversial favorite one. Mine's coconut. I, don't I like the coconut. Dude, I love the coconut LaCroix. I don't know why. I'm a big coconut guy myself. Some people just like hate it. Just people look at people me like, just I'm don't a like coconut water and stuff like that. I love coconut water, coconut Give everything. Too. Give it Give to me. <laughs> Give it all um, to me. Ginger, ginger citrus. That's my favorite one. That's I, your favorite? That's a good yeah, one. It, That's it a Waterloo for yeah. anyone curious. Go get your favorite LaCroix <laughs> sparkling water and let us know what it is. Um, cool. Any any uh, closing thoughts? Nee, you have any, any questions for us before we let you go back to your day? Um, no, but go get them. I'm excited to catch some games of yours. And yeah, it would be, would be sick to repeat again, huh? Hell yeah. Yeah, hopefully yeah. we get to play side by green. side again. We're green visually. Yeah, that'd yeah, be fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> sweet. Okay. Um, 
thank you, Nee, for joining us. Thanks so much. And um, if we don't see you before next weekend, I'll, we'll see you in San Diego. Cool. Thank you. Peace. Uh, Let's start okay. there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, are you going to kick it off or are we just rolling? Well, I G- think that, him, that, that was... Him, oh, fuck. I fucked it up. Can you just uh, do, <laughs> do it again and say, hey, Brett. <laughs> We're good at this, Brett, I swear to God. <laughs> we're professionals. Uh, yeah, we're going to welcome on Brett from Atlanta. Chain Lightning. I should have put my fucking chain shirt on. Damn it. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. all right. I'll go find it. Uh, but uh, yeah, so Brett, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you came from, how you got into Ultimate, how you found the sport, basically your you know, path up to this point. Yeah, I uh I started playing in 2017, like just when I got into college at UAH. Like it's like a small school in Huntsville. Um, if you know Eli Jaime, I literally mm-hmm. ever played frisbee was with him, and he's like you know very good. Uh, and so like him, he like I just got into it playing here at UAH, and then uh, yeah, kind of moved on played club in Huntsville for a bit. If you want like a deep cut, you can know that Eli and I both played on that freaks team that beat machine in 2019. Um, oh, but yeah. Wow. And then we both went and played for hustle in 2019. And then, you know, I've been basically playing for Atlanta ever since. So was the Huntsville team D three? Uh, it was for my first year. Okay. And then it wasn't later. It was D one later. Year. In semis at that, yeah. So okay. I've known him for a while. Sweet, yeah. I'm just, I'm looking at your ultimate reference, and it's oh yeah. It says oh, yeah. D three. It says D three for Huntsville, and mm-hmm. then it says you were a Callahan Award nominee for Huntsville as well. Yeah, in 2020, you know when nobody really looked. Also, <laughs> it's a small school. Oh, okay. I wasn't. Cool. I was not relevant at all. And to, <laughs> like, I mean, like, yeah. You may know. I played at Auburn in uh, mm-hmm. grad school. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Just trying to so, take that trip to Natty's. So, how did you learn how to throw? So, you know, where did you get your throws? Like, just a lot of hours getting touches in. Yeah. Did, could you I throw mean, it think, all when you found the sport, or like? Uh, not. No, not really. Uh, I. I mean, may, basically, when I first started, it was you know just like run to the house, but like, oh, yeah. uh, I mean, like, oh, I think it's just playing on well, just like a bad college get used to like oh i have to do everything i can't just like you know cut deep you just gotta like move the ball huck everything yeah that's that's sick cool all right well let's let's fast forward into the upcoming week and talk about your team there so obviously you guys are a one seed you want to talk about like uh how you guys feel if you can speak broadly like as a team if you can going in oh, as a yeah. one seed, kind of like where you guys are at expectations that you may have for yourself as a squad. Yeah. I mean, we're obviously loving the fact that they changed to the, the like, you know, pool, the change, the way the pools work this year. Cause you know, I think uh, not last year, but like, you know, the year before we were in that four or five, like that's just the worst pool. Nobody, yeah. nobody wants to be in there. Um, but you know, now we're, we're like feeling pretty good about our, about our draw. But um, I mean, I think this year is like, it's pretty similar to last year where like, I think it's really wide open. Like there's, I I think if you look back, like our game against y'all uh, at pro champs, if we had lost that game, we would not mm-hmm. have made the bracket. Like mm-hmm. maybe that revolver game, we put more into it the next day, but like, we wouldn't have made the bracket. So, like, I mean, I think it's just so tight between, like, you know, like, one through eight, really. Like, there's there's, there's not a lot of margin. Hey, hey so don't count just... out that nine seed. All right. <laughs> oh, well, I'm considered who – who's ahead of y'all that's – Double wide. I'm... Oh. Double yeah, wide. Okay. Double. Okay. We lost maybe through, maybe we lost it is one regions. through nine. They're, they're pretty solid. <laughs> I can't, yeah, after we lost them in BBL, I can't talk too much shit. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, it's – yeah. It's super open. There's so many good teams. Yeah, uh, that's very true. I feel like this year is is, is maybe more so than any. 
Pony, Pony and Truck obviously sit in the top, but the not in, they're definitely not infallible. Mm-hmm. Oh no, yeah. I mean, Truck just needs like a a weird game, like where they just aren't hitting the little bladey inside, and you just yeah. falls apart. Sweet. Um, and then kind of looking ahead a little bit too, what games, you know, are you most excited for? Um, is there any teams you're looking forward to playing? Um, and who do you guys kind of view as your biggest competition in pool play? Any games you have circled there for pool play? Yeah. I mean, it's machine. We played them in pool play last year and like, Mm -hmm. I think we only ended up losing by like two, but we played pretty bad. I think Mm -hmm. we're kind of looking at that one. Also, I'm excited to play furious. I've never played them. It's like I think that's like one of the last teams that I've I've never played, so I'm kind of excited for that. Like yeah, you've played against Blueprint. Well, uh, yeah, sorry. That, <laughs> I'm, I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> he's, got, he's got a point. He's got a point. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, good old good, good old Brooklyn boys. Yeah. Uh, how about how about players? Any players you're looking forward to matching up with? Yeah, Do you, um, maybe specifically. I think Nate against... plays on. Oh, now for yeah machine. for machine. Mm-hmm. Um, so that you know they'll come down in that like the little weird uh, like zone set to start yeah. most points. Like the matchups for me playing offense is always it's just different. Like you're basically gonna get a new guy almost every point. Um, but if I'm crossing over, I'm actually I'm pretty excited about that one. Or if I don't know, we'll probably put Jeremy on Joe, but maybe maybe match up with him again. I haven't gotten a lot of chances these last few years to guard Joe or Nate. Yeah, yeah, I like I like guarding Joe because I feel like it's he's like one of those guys that like is such a threat both ways that you're like they like it's just like that true challenge. Yeah, I feel like you have a little bit of a size advantage on him. Um, yeah, just a little. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm still. I'm, uh, there's there's a few people I'm not still trying to force out, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, let's see. And then it's fear, furious may not know as well. Um, what about just matchups in general at nationals? Are there, are there specific players that you personally like to match up against or, or find, um, challenging and and maybe just like that fun competitive spirit kind of way? Um, I mean, I really want to play pony full strength because like, I mean, I mean, y'all know, like, that's, like, maybe the best roster, like, yeah. ever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would fucking love to put them out. That'd be so <laughs> sick. Uh, but, I mean, yeah, like, every time I played New York, like, recently, I match up with Tone, Antoine, uh, mm-hmm. and, like, because he, he used to play in Atlanta, so I know him pretty well. But it's, it's, it's like, pretty tough, but it's fun because he's, like, definitely faster than me. So... Like it's just it, it's just different because like I generally can just like oh I get that little bit of separation somewhere like I'm at least gonna hold it but yeah it's like you gotta always be checking your shoulder and can maybe match your strength I'm guessing yeah I mean he's yeah like uh, Antoine's not as good in the air I think but yeah I mean he's not bad right right he still gets up there's definitely levels to it. When you oh, when you yeah. get up to the, the to the big boys, yeah, he's not a center. He's not. <laughs> no, no, no. He's like a he's like a small forward. Yeah, exactly. Up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's funny. So, uh, what's your what's your personal mindset going in to this nationals? Um, I mean, I'm excited. I think like there's there's a lot of different reasons, but like I think like trying to kind of prove that I belong at like the top level of players especially with the, the like U.S. tryout coming up in the spring. Like, you know, a good, really good nationals can almost, like, get you on that team. Um, but, I mean, also, like, yeah, I, I think, like, I still have a lot to prove to Atlanta, and, like, I owe them a lot because I've messed some moments up. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> this is what it is, man. I know. Um, speaking of the U.S. Tri- um Kins and I were just talking about that earlier tonight. We're trying to remember when they were. <clears throat> um, it would be cool to see to see all you guys on that running on a team. I'll, I'll be rooting for that. Yeah, we need a, we need the new young 
Yeah. I mean, it's crazy with that team because it's been so long since That's what I was gonna 2016. Say, yeah. yeah. Jeez. I think, right? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Because the last well, one they, got canceled. Yeah. Yeah. They wow. picked it in 2020, right? Yeah. But they never got played. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's been so long since that team's played. It's going to be like a whole new roster. It's going to be cool. That is really cool. That's yeah. sick. I didn't think about it like that. That's sick. Yeah. Because it's like that famous, like, uh, U.S. versus Japan game that you can go That's watch, but like that, that that th- those feel like you know like major oh, throwbacks. Yeah. Going back to watch that, wow. yeah. One one of the one of the games I used to watch when I was younger was the Canada Japan game. That was just like manslaughter, the, the dirtiest game of all time, and it, it was awful. But oh, that no. was a, that was a sweet game to watch. <laughs> Are you talking about the two thousand? It was like two thousand six or something like that. It was two thousand four, maybe two thousand twelve. I don't know. I've shown many people that like game. That. I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. And they're just like bidding through people's backs. Oh yeah, like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah, yeah. and it's spiking on each other. Yeah, that's insane. Um, cool. And then uh, as far as like team goals go, you know, obviously. It, a great goal is to win. Um, but beyond that, like what, what would a successful weekend look like? Um, it can be a mix of, you know, obviously winning or if there's other, other aspects that go into that, you know, success for you guys. Um, I, I think like, you know, base, like we would love to make a semifinal. Uh, like mm-hmm. we haven't, uh, I think Nikki has played in one, but other than that, I don't think anybody, no, well, John won a championship, but, uh, you know, other than that, like very few people have that experience. So like, I mean, that's, that's probably the biggest thing for us. We got to get to those moments at least mm-hmm. first, like, cause I think we've talked about it as a team that like, we've got like a three or four year window here with like, you know, a bunch of guys that are pretty like young and then guys who are older, like John is one of the older guys on our team, but he's like 28. He's not that, yeah. you know? <laughs> um so we we just got like kind of a window here where it's like all right if we're gonna win we've got to win in these three or four years so to like try it goal is really to like establish the start yeah get sent, sort of get your footing get used yeah. to it and who knows uh you guys kind of remind remind us i think of we, we were talking to, to hayden about this too of of, of our team, maybe the last couple of years of knowing that we do have a high ceiling and when you get to quarter semis, really anything can happen. Yeah. I mean, I, I felt like that, like for y'all last year where it's just like, you know, you like hit the right time where you just got super hot in mm-hmm. like in the bracket and just nobody could be you. Thank God. Thank God. Kind of, kind of like the Philadelphia, <laughs> kind of like the Philadelphia <laughs> Phillies in a way. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Oh my God! Yeah, mm. that's funny. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> how about um, uh, more broadly outside of out of out of nationals the next week? But do you have any advice? Good advice for for young players uh, coming up? Um, how how to maybe reach the next level, or for for young teams in terms of what they they should be focusing on? To, to maybe make the leap? Yeah. Um, I mean, we've like, I think something that I've seen in common with a lot of the guys who have like come up recently, is everybody just watches so much film. There's so much out there, man. Like you can watch all these guys play. You can like, I tell people that I'm like, yeah, I just like watch people. And I'm like, Hey, this guy does this really well. I'm just going to like, take that. I'm going to like, go do that, that he's doing and try and learn how to do it. Um, but yeah, I mean that's probably the biggest thing. There's so much film. There's so much free film too. If you're just on YouTube, like or the 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 USAU Vimeo is now where they post yeah. everything. <laughs> yeah, I I I'm downloading that like like it's gold, so just in case they <laughs> yeah, it's just, they take it down. There's do so much specific, to watch out there. Yeah. Do you have any specific players when you're watching film that you're like that you looked up to, or you like watching, or you try to emulate your game after? Um, I watched John Stubbs before I played with him a lot, uh, yeah, just, which is funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, uh, I don't know that I ever have had like anybody that specific. Mm-hmm. I think I just kind of like look at the individual things that somebody's doing. And I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, like, like this guy, like is making this cut from this angle really well. Like, why is he doing it? How's he setting it up? You know? 
that type of thing. Um, as film junkies, we love that stuff. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> cool. Should we, uh, should we move on to the finer things or, or should we open it up maybe for Brett? If do, do we have any, um, well, additional Kansas, questions for Brett? Kansas, or, do you have any, do you have a last oh. uh, a thought? Oh, I just, I wanted to ask you, Brett, like, do you, how much do you think about like, how do you use your size to your advantage while playing? I mean, obviously that's such a big factor for you, you know, um, yeah. just being always one of the biggest guys on the field. So how do you, how do you like to use that? What kind of things um, do you think it helps with? How does it hurt? I think like, I've always been like pretty quick for how big I am just cause like, you mm-hmm. know, I've like, you know, I lift quite a bit, uh, but I think like that's probably the one thing where I like ah, I wish I could be quicker always. I don't think that's ever gonna you know not yeah. be the case. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think like it's a lot of like preventing people from making plays on you. Like I think if you like very rarely do I have to like go jump over somebody for something. Like I like I can I think I can do it if I have to. But most of the time like even on an under or just like a deep ball you just like play the edge just like stick your i I always tell people i'm like i'm just gonna stick my ass in the way (laughs) just like you're not gonna get through it (laughs) yeah so you don't always have to hit that high point exactly not really it's like it's just secure in the ball yeah Yeah. so i like that mindset it's a good mindset personal anecdote too when we played at uh pro (laughs) champs just the first time i played against you and i got switched on to you for like (laughs) 45 seconds. Mm. I felt like like a mouse and you were like a lion. Like I was just like the smallest dude in the entire world and I was standing next to you just like looking for somebody to switch with me for like 45 seconds. <laughs> Thankfully yeah. like a timeout got called or something like that. But um, <laughs> yeah. Um so what's your favorite like what's your favorite lift? What do you, what do you like to lift? What's your what's your best lift? Um I mean like my my best I like used to deadlift like just way more than I probably should. Straight bar? Uh, yeah. Nice. I, I do some trap bar now too, but like, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean like in my peak when it was like in COVID, like I was like, oh, I yeah. weighed like 245 and I could Damn. deadlift Holy smokes. like 515. Damn. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like um, I, it was like, well, like just for a reference, I'm at like 215 to 210 right now. So I'm like down Holy 30 Holy pounds. smokes. Like I would like, I mean, what else was I going to do, man? <laughs> yeah. eating, and, eating and lifting. I did the same Jeez, thing, Jake. except I was like 160 to like 175. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Different scale. Uh, how tall are you, Brett? I'm 6'5". Six five. Six I might five. be taller, to be honest. It's, it's been a, a really tall 6'5". It's a tall 6'5". Yeah, five. I think also I stand up really straight. I think that like gets people. Yeah, you do seem like a behemoth out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a behemoth. Um, yeah, man. <laughs> somebody, I, I, I went to a workout class on Monday morning, and, and the trainer there asked if I had reached the th- 1,000 club. I have not. Um, do you know what the 1,000 club is? Isn't that like combined squat, deadlift, bench? Yeah. 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 I mean, you're well on your way. What, what are your other... Uh, when, when again yeah at that time uh, yeah like it was i think pretty comfortably i never like looked i don't remember to be honest but i don't think i was benching a ton because i just like i don't know i don't remember why but yeah more of a leg I mean, guy yeah, not probably not now i don't think so um maybe if i was like really pushing it what do you think but, your yeah. squat what do you think your max squat ever was it's somewhere in the four hundreds. Damn. God. Yeah. So yeah, you're you're easily uh, but dude. Like uh, you got to remember, all this stuff is so weight based. It's <laughs> yeah, so yeah, much how much you is. weigh. That's true. Like, it's That's so true. much lower now, because yeah. it's just like I don't weigh as much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. It, that's an, another interesting question. Like, do you? Would you be able to play at two forty five? Oh no way! I'd be so slow. I think I'd be so slow. I don't know, but like. I might be like explosive, but like, yeah, like top speed wise, no. Ultimate mm-hmm. is so different from like other things. Like, you know, you see like basketball players are like pretty, they're like lean, but like they still have some like, you know, like, I mean, Jokic is the best example where that dude's like, <laughs> you know, he doesn't even like really look like that much of an athlete other than the fact mm-hmm. that he's like 7'2. But like, yeah, I mean, ultimate, you have to be like fast, straight line and like explosive, which mm-hmm. there's, 
not a lot of stuff that's like that. And it's like, like endurance too. I find yeah. it like to be like a mix of like soccer players and NFL receivers. It's like yeah. soccer players have that endurance and NFL receivers have that like quick twitch a little bit more. Where, where do you get your programming from? Now I'm just oh. down down the wait. With we're, we're in a rabbit hole. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, Nerd. it's fine. Uh, I'm like super lucky. My mom is a personal trainer. Yeah, and oh. she trains athletes. Nice. So I've been just doing this stuff for like my whole life. That's fucking yeah. sick. Any it's like gr- famous athletes or, or more just? Uh, I mean, like she she's also a volleyball coach. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know if y'all any of y'all watch volleyball, but like the best like libero in the maybe just in the world, definitely in college right now, Elena Scott. She's like our third sibling. Yeah. Oh, really? It's so like, you know yeah, her quite yeah. well. Yeah. I don't have to. I'm gonna have to Google. Does, does your mom wish you were a volleyball player? <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure at some level. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you'd be pretty good, right? <laughs> I, st- I still play some. I'm like, I'm like good, but like, yeah. you know, I'm not like, yeah. I know Misha is playing, trying to play on the tour still. Is that right? Yeah. I didn't know he was. Yeah, he, we. I guess it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. That he would be good. He needs your mom, probably. Yeah, he does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get the skills there at least. Are you Are you googling Elena? Yeah, I've got, <laughs> yeah, I've got her her Louisville page yep. up here quite um, good yeah it's so, like got a bunch of like usa tryouts and stuff that's it's just like sick. weird to like know somebody that's like that like kind of mainstream sports famous like yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's well, funny. that's a good cool. background good background for that <clears throat> heard. it's all coming together yeah it's it all, the whole the whole the whole picture is coming <laughs> coming to frame yep. that's cool all right. Do? Uh, um, Brett, Brett, anything, anything, anything for us before we uh, uh, move on to finer things? Yeah. Kind of curious. You asked me who I'm excited to play. Who are y'all excited to play? Any Ooh. team, not just in your pool. Anybody you Pers- want to beat really bad? Yeah. Personally, I'm really mm-hmm. excited to play Ring. Um, in my career, I've played them like twice i think we played him at pro champs but i was i wasn't playing that game and i've never i've never beat them when i was on the field so i'm really excited to play ring um like you said it'd be nice to to knock pony off i think yeah yeah but but ring is ring is the one i got circled i agree i think those are the obvious ones like ring because i've never played them before on bravo and they're in the pool uh truck because Obviously, we've played them so much. And last year, both those games, like, I just had really good games against Truck, and I am I would like to keep that streak going. And uh, and then Pony is just like, God, I – that's the team, though, like, in one game that oh, you yeah. just, I just want to be, you know, the most, I think. And I think that's fun because I think pretty much everyone feels that way, and yeah. they know that, and it's, it's a good – it's a good environment <laughs> that it creates. Yeah, they're probably used to having the, their, the target on their back at this point. Yeah, and I think they play into it as well, you know. Like, they know, and they know they can get people riled up. and it's, They're a good villain. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. fucking New York. Like, they're always yeah. those guys. They're, like, the only good sports team that New York has right now is Ultimate. So <laughs> which is pretty funny, though. Um, cool. All right. Uh Quinn, do you want to introduce this segment or do you, do you want me to do it? I can do it. Um, so here we go. Uh, getting into the finer things presented by Kiko Socks. Experience a finer moment with a fresh pair of Kiko Socks. <laughs> we, we just came up with that, Brett. That's brand new. <laughs> oh, that's, that's uh, I love that. I love that. <laughs> um, so for those listening that don't know, uh, this is our only our second time doing the finer things. So it's a small pleasure in life or something really small that makes a big difference in your life. Um, generic example, clean bed sheets, pull through parking spots, something like that. Um, Kins, you want to kick us off? No, let's have Brett kick us off. Yeah. Kick us off, Brett. Kick us off. Yeah. Brett. So I, I thought of this, like as soon as you said clean bed sheets, it's putting on clothes right out of the dryer. Yeah, dude. Ooh, it's a little. Right out of the dryer. Ooh, it's a little chilly the Kiko out. The socks right out of the dryer. <laughs> oh my God. 
Oh, that's, that's a good one. That that's is a, really a good, good one. one. Especially when it's like a little chilly. They're still a little warm. Oh, yeah. Maybe mm-hmm. you just got out the shower. You throw it on. Oh, <laughs> that's, wow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Every, everyone's getting that warm, fuzzy feeling as we sleep. Yeah, it's starting to get chilly here in Colorado that's now. Good. I don't know what it's like in Atlanta. <laughs> 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 uh, All right, Kins, what do you got? Uh, I got one that you know I just thought of recently. Um, when you get a, when you have a really long practice day, it's early in the morning, you wake up early, you know, you don't have much time to get right out the house. You leave it all out there on the field. You come back and you sit down on the couch and you know, you're not moving for like five, six hours maybe, but you've like never felt so satisfied to be on the couch. Like there's no guilt about oh, it. Yeah. You know, you come back from that training session and there's just zero guilt about sitting on the couch. That is a that is a finer moment. Good one. You yeah. earned you earned the sit. You, you earned, earned that sit. And you've got like <laughs> you've got like NFL red zone for the uh, next eighteen hours just seven hours of yeah. commercial free football. <laughs> yeah. and there's just a, some good food. That that I <laughs> really I love that feeling of knowing it's okay to just sit down for the rest of the day. And honestly, even if you do have a bunch of shit to do, like getting that workout in before work. Mm. And knowing you don't have to do it afterwards, True. it's primo. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not my finer thing. <laughs> don't expand my finer thing. Don't force them into this. Yeah, it, yeah. Is, it is your thing. <laughs> All right, Mike, you want to go? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I have a great one this week, but uh, um, something that was coming to mind, uh, well, I got maybe, maybe two small ones uh, because – when I, I drink coffee religiously every morning, I'm trying to transition to tea a little bit. Um, and going to practice, I usually put it in one of those, uh, metal thermoses those whatever Yeti or something. Mm And they're, they're like double insulated and it has like the small, small opening. so it's like impossible to sip without just torching your lips. And it honestly, it infuriates me. It it like sets my (laughs) temper off when I'm trying to (laughs) Um, so it's, it's, it's actually the opposite with those, the slow mornings when, you, when I can open it or drink out of a, a ceramic mug mm-hmm. because like it's still hot, but you, you have that temperature control and it is honestly, it's not that, that it, I think so many of my things are, are not about the pleasure I get but the anger that I do not experience <laughs> in the moment. <laughs> and that is one of them. That's good. That's um, really good. Yeah. I'll give out one other small one. I won't save it. It's uh, I like, pur- I try to purge. I've been trying to purge clothes lately, like send shit to Goodwill. I just gave away a bunch of jerseys to all the college kids. Um, but Quinn, we were talking about TikToking earlier and mm-hmm. scrolling, like doom scrolling through your phone. <clears throat> And that moment, you know, that feeling you have when you drop a box of shit off at Goodwill and like, it's sort of relieving and you've released Mm -hmm. this toxic energy (laughs) onto somebody else, (laughs) give it to somebody else to deal with. somebody else's problem. Uh, uh, But when I'm TikToking or or scrolling through, I'm like a YouTube guy or Instagram. and, And when you get to like, it's some stupid fucking video that's meaningless and you're just staring at it and watching it for like 30 of the 50 seconds and it's about to like get to the reveal and you're just like, I don't need to know this. And then you scroll <laughs> and shut it off. When you like get to that state of mind, it is like Nirvana because, <laughs> cause it's like you've, you've purged yourself of this deed to consume this meaningless material. I, I thought like you were going to say like, when you put your phone down to like not be looking, no, not be scrolling, <laughs> like continue oil. scrolling. <laughs> uh, that's just, even better. That's even just, better. You just keep going <laughs> on to the next. Because I thought it was gonna be you see the stupid video, and now yeah, I throw my phone away and yeah. disgust. <laughs> yeah, and that, that is the do intent. Something productive, but no, I, 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 I see it's meaningless, and I scroll more. <laughs> well, that's yeah, funny. maybe I close the app. <laughs> that's really funny. Um. So I've got one, and then um, the newest member of the Finers, my my wife Devin, has one um, that she wanted me to share. Hers <laughs> is 
a fresh stick of deodorant, like putting it's like opening it and taking that weird like cap off and like putting on a fresh stick of deodorant. It's like perfectly round. <laughs> I don't know. That's hers. Um, <laughs> I like that. But mine this week, since it's getting a little colder, um, for all you dog owners out there, I have like a a chunky golden retriever. Um, when she lays down, I can stick my bare feet under her her body and get the the warmth from her <laughs> her her chunkiness her on my, belly. <laughs> onto my bare cold feet while I'm working. And that's like just a beautiful moment for, yeah. for everybody involved. Nice so, out. Hear me out. It yes. kind of feels like a pair of socks. All these all these roads are leading to the same place. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, sweet. All right, Brett. Uh, anything else before we before we let you go? Uh, not really. I'm just excited, ready to fly out there, man. Yeah, yeah, that dude. Time. Okay, well, safe travels, and um, we'll see you on the field. Best of luck next week. Take care. Peace. Yeah. Peace.